Afternoon, everybody. Uh, some of you may have noticed on my Instagram page a few days ago, I talked about a comic book I looked at. Yes, I'm a comic book geek in addition to being a historian. It's this one here. It's called Superman Red Sun. Basically, it paints the picture if Superman had landed in Soviet Ukraine versus Kansas. And there's a whole big thing because of the whole Cold War from that position. And I, my mind started going once again about the Cold War and the things I learned from there. And <clears throat> particularly I'm thinking on is uh, Secretary Khrushchev, who eventually becomes Secretary of the Soviet Union. Actually one of two men from the Ukraine who actually becomes Secretary of the Soviet Union, the other being Mikhail Gorbachev. Now, not so much going to talk about the political side, let's just talk about the man and who he was. He was a really interesting guy. Now, he was born, of course, in the Ukraine during the time of Tsarist Russia, and he was to say he was dirt poor because he was not part of the aristocracy. And so what he would have to do every single summer was, because he, he couldn't afford shoes, his family couldn't afford shoes, so his, he would get two large pieces of bark off of a tree and then find some twine, wrap it around his feet, and that was, those were his shoes for the summer. That's the level of dirt poor they were in Tsarist Russia. But he also had a very keen mind toward, like, uh, toward engineering and toward mechanics to where when he was a young man, he was able to take a bicycle, put a motor on it, and basically turn it into his own motorcycle as, as a young man with just the means that he had. Brilliant mind of the young man. You know, then he eventually he fell under the sway of the, of the Bolsheviks. And long story short, as we all know, he became one of Stalin's cronies. Now, <clears throat> we're going to focus on that so much because after... The, after Stalin passed away in 1953, and there was a whole lot of different things going on with the Soviet Union, and Khrushchev actually wound up becoming secretary of the party in 1956. And he began taking a different approach, started doing the whole de-Stalinization thing, you know, no more gulags, no more torture, and just certain people actually not have to live in fear as much anymore. And he took a different approach. He reached out to the West, to President Eisenhower, who he began looking to as a personal friend. And one thing that came of that was the um, Khrushchev actually came to a visit to the United States in 1959. Now, there are a lot of great things for that Khrushchev could have wanted to see. Can we guess what's the one place he really, really wanted to go? Disneyland. He really wanted to go to Disneyland. He heard all about it and he wanted to go. But then he was bummed because when he got to La, they, the tour got down to Los Angeles, they were, they were as they put it, you know, LAPD couldn't secure the park and the Soviet Secret Service couldn't um, guarantee his safety. So he was pretty bummed about that. He's like, what are they going to do? I mean, do something bad to me while I'm there? I mean, would I be seized by bandits who might destroy me? And so he was really bummed. So, but another thing that happened that was actually really funny and neat it just shows the the boyish character of Nikita Khrushchev was they went north up there to the San Francisco Bay Area and they took him to the area of IBM and uh, they showed him all those supercomputers. And there's an interesting point here made in this book where it said, Khrushchev relaxed enough to reveal his amazement, not at IBM's computers, which he boasted that the Soviet Union had plenty of but at a shiny Formica tabletops in the plant's self-service cafeteria that rendered tablecloths forever dirty and spotted in the Soviet restaurants unnecessary. He said, you brush off the crumbs and wipe it off with a cloth and everything's clean, he said. So of all the things he saw in IBM and all of our computer technology of the time, he was most impressed by the fact that there was a table you didn't have to worry about dirty and tablecloth on. It just showed much of his character, just how, in a lot of ways, the big kid he was in a lot of ways. And it's like, you know, under Nikita Khrushchev, it could be said that the Soviet Union had, uh, communism had its golden era, because he stepped away a great deal from militarism to, in a lot of ways. And he began putting the money back into the Soviet economy. To where when he was secretary of the party, Soviet people actually had luxury items. They had blue jeans, which is something, of course, everyone had over here on this side of the pond, but over there, something was a rarity. People started getting access to blue jeans, the everyday people. They also got access to records and record players, things that, you know, they never had. And they were saying, oh, wow, communism is working good for us now. But then the mainstream hardliners, after um, the Cuban Missile Crisis, began feeling that Khrushchev didn't take a hard enough line with President Kennedy on the matter, and, and he felt that 
they felt that he was too soft and Stalin would have been a lot rougher. But quite frankly, if Stalin had been in charge and had been a lot rougher, both of our countries would be a radioactive crater. So I'm kind of glad that Khrushchev was in charge. But because of that, he was pushed out in 1966. So <clears throat> those are some ideas just on the man, Nikita Khrushchev. So there you go.